Welcome to the Stroke Cast. A Generation X stroke survivor explores rehab, recovery, the frontiers of neuroscience, and how to peel a banana with one hand. Hello, I'm Bill Monroe, and welcome to episode 133 of the Stroke Cast. This week's episode is brought to you by Modus Nova. To find out if Modus Nova can help you regain use of an affected limb, be sure to visit strokecast.com slash modus nova. Today is going to be another solo episode. And why is that? Well, it's because I am recording this the day after my stroke anniversary. Yay, it's happened. So yesterday was Thursday, June 3rd. And that was my fourth stroke anniversary. So four years since this particular journey all started. It's a day I like to take take a few moments and just think about where things are now. I got to say four years, it's just a mind boggling amount of time because it feels like it's been four months. I mean, I can still practically taste the lentil soup that I had in the hospital. But I've been out for, uh, well, obviously, uh, almost four years now. I'm still getting better. I'm still seeing functionality return. Within the last uh, five or six months or so, I've started to get some independent finger control back on my left side. So whenever anybody tells you you only have six months to recover or you only have 12 months to recover and then that's it, they are wrong. Recovery can be ongoing. The, the, the myth that you only have six months or 12 months to recover is absolute nonsense. In that first six to 12 months, that's when you're going to see the most recovery, the fastest. But, you know, as I say, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And I'm going to continue recovering for years to come and getting more and more function back as long as I keep you know, doing the work. But that is one of those things that's reassuring to see that I am getting more of that finger use back. Is my walking getting better? Maybe not uh, recently, but I can attribute a lot of that to 2020 and 2021 with the lockdown has meant I have spent relatively little time walking around the neighborhood. And to get better at walking, you got to go walking. So, I mean, that's that's certainly one of those key elements that uh, is there. So I'm hoping this summer to get out and just spend some more time visiting the neighborhood and continue to see my recovery progress from there. I've still had uh, a couple of other uh, things coming up. I, I found recently that my right hip Uh, which is my unaffected side, has started to hurt a little bit more. I've started to have some hip pain or started to have some sciatic pain. You know, that's obviously annoying. I think in part that's because of overuse, because obviously for the last several years, my right hip has had to take on a lot more of my body weight than it was ever meant to, as, as the left side was just not up to taking all the weight. So, that's happened. So I've been experimenting with that and trying to figure out how I can address that. Uh, a lot of it is rest when appropriate. But the other thing I've found is I, I tried just sort of taking shorter steps to see if that would mean there was less stress on it. But that actually ended up making things worse. What I found is that actually taking longer steps with my affected side, with my left side, actually ended up causing fewer issues for my right hip. So by extending my gait, I am getting a little bit, maybe I'm getting a little bit of a smoother mechanical motion. Uh, But regardless, it's putting less stress on the right hip. And I'm not entirely sure why, but yeah, that is a thing. The other thing that's happening is that as I take longer steps with my left, my affected side, I am less likely to hyperextend my knee. It just does not pop back as much. And I think that's because when I put the, the leg out just a little bit further, it's obviously not as just strict a vertical as with shorter steps, but those longer steps give my knee a chance to 
get itself in a stable position as I continue through my gait and through my gait pattern. So I'll probably be talking about this with my physiatrist in the next visit. Uh, and like I say, this is what works for me. Maybe it's something that could help you out if you're experiencing that as well. But again, talk to your own uh, personal medical team before uh, just taking advice off a podcast. So are things not getting as better quickly? Well, I'm still uh, still tired. Uh, I'm still dealing with neuro fatigue. And that's actually sort of been increasing over the last few months, uh, despite me getting what I think is the same or maybe more sleep. So I'm going to have to figure that out. But it may be a case of as I've gotten better and more resistant to fatigue, I've also been taking on more and more stuff. So maybe that's something I should be doing some thinking about. Regardless, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that something is working. And any way you look at it, though, four years is definitely a big win. So is an event like this something to celebrate? You see, because some folks are confused that I'm happy on my stroke anniversary, that I'm happy on June 3rd because stroke is a bad thing and that is a terrible event to go through and why would you want to remember that? But the way I look at it, and I know everybody is going to have different perspectives, the way I look at it may or may not be the way that you choose to look at your own stroke experience, but it's not so much a celebration of the stroke itself. What it is, is a celebration of survival, of living through that experience, of living through that day, because that day could have gone so much worse, but it didn't. I survived. And I learned and I got more focused about the things that I want to do. And I've been able to join this amazing community and, and meet some, some fantastic and delightful people. So it's, of course, a, a, a day of mixed emotions when you start looking at all of that coming together. For my girlfriend, however, it's a little bit different. It's a day that, as she describes it, is basically the worst day of her life. You see, her experience was very different from mine and, and was traumatizing in a very different way. Because from that morning when I had that stroke and she called that ambulance and I got in the ambulance and she accompanied me to the hospital and helped with the paperwork and was just there. I mean, my job was easy. I had just one thing to focus on and that was, you know, not dying. And that, when you're in that situation, that kind of occupies pretty much all of your core, core thoughts. She had to be worried about me. And to compound it also on that day, it appeared that her mother 600 miles away had had, had a stroke the same day as well. She, it, we later found out it was something else. But at the time, yeah, I mean, that's a big deal. But she had to deal with thinking about what's going to happen to our lives. What is... As things get turned upside down, how does this impact work? How does this impact, you know, just the fact of paying rent and, and those types of things and potential of losing one another? I mean, those are all very big, big things. And they were things that I just wasn't as focused on at the time. So I can look at this day as being a much more positive look back and, and that's easier for me to do than it is for her so i have to temper my celebration of my second life with the terror that she went through and not to try and make her live through it again obviously when it comes to stroke you know those who have the stroke are the ones that are most severely affected but it can be helpful for us to Remember that our loved ones and the folks in our immediate circle around us are also affected. They're going through this experience, too, in a very different way, with different fears and different worries 
and different concerns and different trauma than we are. It doesn't just affect us, it affects all of our, our friends, our family, our loved ones, our households, everything is affected by that. And it's important to go ahead and recognize that and figure out how to balance those concerns. Still, it is definitely worth commemorating and recognizing the direction that my life has taken since that day four years ago. And it's worth spending some time to think about it and spending some time to still celebrate that I'm here and that I've got this other 150 to 200 years ahead of me or so. So anyway, this year, I also finally went ahead and finished a project I've been thinking about since I was in the hospital. And that is, I finally got a tattoo to mark this experience physically. Uh, obviously, a tattoo doesn't come across real well in a podcast, but you can see pictures of that and see the journey and you can read that whole story uh, separately over at strokecast.com slash tattoo. Or you may have seen it on uh, Instagram or Facebook or, or somewhere like that. But uh, if you're interested in a stroke tattoo, go ahead and check out strokecast.com slash tattoo. So with that, where do I go from here? Well, uh, obviously, I'm going to be continuing to work on my recovery. And that's going to be in, in part with the, uh, the Modus Hand. Uh, I'm thrilled to have them uh, come on as a sponsor. I also, sometime within the next several months, do want to get back into PT again, back into physical therapy, so I can work on learning how to run again. I mean, I don't want to go ahead and run in any marathons or necessarily recreationally, but I, I'd kind of like to have the ability to extract myself from a situation in a hurry should that need arise. I've also uh, slated to get some more Discord or Botox to work on my hand and loosen up my, my hand again. And the thing about getting the uh, Botox or the Discord injections, which is something you have to do every three to four months, is that after a while, you know, it takes a little while to start working and then it works and then it sort of starts to ramp down and lose effectiveness. I was starting to think that Maybe I don't really need this anymore. Is it really having that big of an impact? Because after a certain amount of time, it eventually does lose its effectiveness as your, your body just learns to process the neurotoxin in a different way. But then I sort of hit a hit hit the hit the wall last uh, last week or so when my last disport injection finally stopped working completely, and I woke up with my hand in a much tighter fist, and it's like. Oh, yeah, that's why I continue to go back for that. It doesn't seem dramatic until it's suddenly no longer working. And then I find myself having this really tight fist again. So that is coming up for this summer. I'm also doing things like, you know, working on a book. It's something I've wanted to do for a very long time. And I've, I'm, I've made some progress. I've got an outline done. I've got a chapter and an introduction done. So if you happen to be a publisher or have a publisher who's interested in that, I'm happy to take that call. But part of that process is actually going through my medical records. And if things are a little fuzzy for you around your hospital time, you can just contact your hospital or your various medical facilities and ask them to send you copies of your records and then start reading through them. And that's been kind of an enlightening experience because, well, obviously that time was a little fuzzy for me because, well, now it was four years ago. But at the time, I also had a brain injury and I was trying to process a heck of a lot of stuff at that time. So obviously I'm not going to recall some of those details. But going through the, the records and the reports from my doctors and my therapists, it's been very interesting to just read those details and see what comes up. One of the nice things about going through those reports is that my therapists often actually included in their reports direct quotes that I said during PT or OT or, uh, or whatever experience it was. And those just direct quotes do a real nice job of sort of capturing my mindset and can help me put me back into that place when I, I want to learn more. 
So I'm going through that process, and while I'm reading those, I'm also breaking them out by day, and I'm also now consolidating that with my social media and Facebook postings from that time as well. I'll probably also dive back into the email to see if I was sending much email. Because really what I want to do is sort of get a comprehensive look at just what was happening in that day from third parties' perspectives, from my own perspective, from things that I shared publicly, and just put that all together into a thing that I can then use to really just better understand this story of my experience that I'm trying to tell. So that is one of those projects that I am working on. I had hoped to have that completely done by the end of uh, 2021. Don't know if I'm going to make it, but I am certainly giving that a try. And aside from that, going forward, I'm, I'm still happy to be able to work full time as a corporate trainer, getting to speak, write, train people, and ultimately, maybe in another few months, get to start traveling again. One of the things I want to do a lot more of also is start just doing more speaking engagements, whether that's going to be to various support groups, especially now that so many support groups have gone virtual, uh, or speaking at conferences and keynote presentations, and just to be able to talk about some of the lessons that I've learned through this stroke experience and how I find that applies to corporate world or or building those relationships and just better understanding how our brains work to enhance our overall life experiences. Anyway, it's always lots of different projects that I have going on in my head at least. And why is that? Well, to quote the hit musical Hamilton, just like my country, I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. And that brings us to our hack of the week. But first, let's talk about our sponsor, Modus Nova. Modus Nova makes the Modus Hand and Modus Foot. Now, these are air and AI-powered robotic exoskeletons for your affected hand or foot. I wear the Modus Hand on my left arm, and it helps me get the tens of thousands of reps I need to build the new neural pathways by playing video games. The Modus Hand assists with wrist extension or flexion, or it resists my wrist movement to make sure I get the workout that I need. To find out if the Modus Hand or Modus Foot can help you, visit strokecast.com slash Modus Nova. Use the promo code STROKECAST to save 10% on your first month. And now back to our hack of the week. Try using large plates or bowls to carry your microwave snacks. Most of the food that we cook in the microwave comes in its own container, usually a flimsy cardboard one or something similar to optimize the cooking experience in the microwave. Maybe it's a tray for a frozen dinner, or maybe it's a cup for some microwavable prepackaged soup or uh, attempt at mac and cheese. Now, these containers, though, they can be difficult to hold with one hand because they're hot, or with impaired balance. A lot of times, these, these things simply need two hands to, you know, not have them collapse on themselves as you drag it from the kitchen to the table in front of the TV. What I've started doing is to move them around the apartment, I just take a large plate to the microwave oven and drag the food, still in its container, onto the plate. Now that it's on the plate, I can easily carry it to someplace else with just one hand by just grabbing the plate by the edge without sticking my hand into the food. Uh, I make way less of a mess on the table, too. I also do this with bowls of soup or cereal if it's pretty full. I'll, I'll put an outer bowl or a large plate underneath it, which makes it, again, easier and just safer to carry food around. So if you need to move different smaller dining things around, go ahead and put them on a large plate or a large bowl. It simply makes it that much less likely that I'll spill something or that I'll drop something or that I will, in general, make a mess of things. So that's it for this week. If you have a stroke anniversary, I hope that it brings you joy and contentment. After all, we're still here and we've got a lot of stuff to do. Head on over to strokegas.com slash tattoo to see my new ink. 
Be sure to subscribe to the StrokeCast newsletter launching in just a few weeks now by visiting strokecast.com slash news. Be sure to share this episode with someone you know by giving them the link strokecast.com slash four years, the number four years. And of course, as always, don't get best, get better. Thanks a lot. I'm Bill Monroe, and I'll talk to you soon. The Strokecast, Bill Monroe, and Bill's guests provide general information and entertainment, not medical advice. Please do not make any changes to your treatment plan or the execution of your treatment plan without first consulting your personal doctor or medical team. The Strokecast is a proud production of the Currently Speaking Podcast Network.